Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Colvin. And Election Day is coming up here to tell us everything we need to know before the vote. Town Clerk Ann Quirk. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. We're, we're quite busy right now, actually. We have a lot of folks coming in to file an absentee ballot request. Mm. Tell me a little bit about the absentee ballots. Is there, a, is there a, um, a, a deadline for getting those in? Yes, there is. Uh, the town clerk's office will be closed at noon on Monday, the day before the election. And the reason for that is that's the last time we can take in an absentee ballot request so that it gives us time to get everything processed and out to the polls on Election Day. Indeed. And one would think that if you need to file an absentee ballot request in the afternoon before Election Day, you can probably come and vote regular. That's the feeling by the state. And that's a mass general law, so, which is what we follow. So yes. Um, Hopefully, everyone has gotten their request in by now because it, the time is short. It's a week away. And to receive them in the mail now, there's always that possibility that they won't get to you in time or back to us in time. Exactly. So that's always a concern. You're really running really close there. Yes. And of course, uh, the, the deadline to register has come and gone. Um, so pretty much if you're not registered, uh, if you're, you're out of date, you're, you're out of luck at you're this point. You're really out of luck, unfortunately. And we did have, we have a cutoff for every election, uh, again, according to state law, 20 days prior to the election. So we held our uh, registration open until 8 p.m. I believe that was October 15th. I, I think that's correct. And um, if they didn't come in and register by then, there's nothing we can do for this election. Now, there's lots of people that might have moved within the town mm -hmm. and are still voters. Right. So they would vote in their, pre their previous precinct. You know, we may not, they may not have caught up with us in time for their new address, but certainly we don't want them to not vote. I if exactly. they're, yeah. And if people have questions, that's something that they can relatively easily figure out where they go to vote or where they're registered, correct? Absolutely. There's, there's several different locations. They can always count, call the town clerk's office at 508-862-4044. We, we get calls all day long about this, and we have no problem answering those. We do have 13 precincts in this town but actually 11 different locations. So we do want to make sure that we make it as easy as possible for everybody. Um, we also have, there's a website now set up under the mass.gov through the state. And they can put type in, where do I vote? Yes. And it pops up right there for them. It gives, their ad, they put in their address and that's your precinct. That's where you vote. It's, it's really, really helpful. I love the internet has really uh, revolutionized this before you really you had to make a phone call. But now yes. you can just type in your address and it'll tell you exactly where to vote and sometimes even the polling location. So there are 11 different polling locations. Any changes from the last time we had an election? No. All the same. All the same. And the other thing is, is that on our website, we've put up sample ballots for precinct. One has its own ballot. Precincts 2 through 10 and 13 have a separate ballot, and then precincts 11 and 12 have a separate ballot. Indeed, and is that mostly the, the state representatives that are running? Yes. It is, okay. It's for, the five, it's for the different districts. Indeed, because we, of course, in here on Barnstable this morning, we have the 5th Barnstable District uh, rep, the 1st Barnstable District, and the 2nd Barnstable District rep, all of which represent different areas mm -hmm. of town. So that's, that's definitely good to know uh, for, for people to be able to see the ballot. If they're not sure um, you know, what they're voting on, then from there they can go on and, and find information. So where can they find that sample ballot? Is it right on the, the clerk's it's, page? It's right on the clerk's page under under elections, election information. And um, the other, and again, if they go in to do where do I vote and the state level, they're going to find it there too. Exactly. So, so that's kind of a nice bonus for all of us. And where we have about over 32,000 voters in this town, we're kind of hoping we'll get a good turnout for this election. Now talk to me a little bit about turnout. Obviously this is not a, a presidential election year and I think that's when we kind of reach the pinnacle of voter turnout when there is that presidential election. Correct. Um, but when we have a state election like this, and I think you know, there's a lot of contested races on the ballot. Um, of course a governor, which we haven't elected a governor in, in some time. Yes. Um, so you know, again, again, anticipating as you say a, a, a big turnout. What, how much of a difference is there between like a race like this where we have a governor in 
some, some <coughs> state rep races as opposed to a presidential race? Uh, the presidential will bring out so many more people. It's just amazing to me. But uh, I'm hoping for a good 35 to 40 percent turnout for this election. We'll see what happens. Good. We'll certainly keep our fingers crossed. So in terms of what you uh, and, and then the rest of the, the, the folks in the clerk's office do to prepare for the election, can you talk to me a little bit? Can you give oh, our sure. viewers some perspective on, on why you guys have been so busy lately? Sure. We start with um, receiving in the absentee ballots first from the state. And everything has to be checked over, make sure everything is correct and, and that it's all our ballots. Then um, we send out, we, we receive from a lot of people letters requesting absentee ballots. We put information out to let everybody know that if you are not able to be at the polling location on the election day because you're going to be out of town, certainly you may have an absentee ballot. There are three rules according to the mass government laws that you can be out of town on election day you can receive one if you are too ill to make it to the polling places we will certainly get one out to you mm -hmm. and if the, for religious reasons you cannot come out that day to vote interesting those are the three reasons and that's that's it it's that's not like it. i don't feel like it or i want to yeah. vote early you right. know <laughs> i got a date yeah. i can't go <laughs> those are the reasons so that's what we start with and then um I don't know how many of you realize that, that we have voting machines that have to be tested. And we go through a process of making up dummy ballots, ballots to put through this machine. The, each of the machines that go out to the polling locations plus one, our spam machine so that if anything happens on voting day, we have a spam machine to use. The, those results I have to send up to the Secretary of State's office so they know that we have actually done the testing is as is required by law. We have to fill those bags, there's ba black bags that are on wheels with all the ballots and we f fix up the, um, we have fishing tackle boxes. I know that sounds a little odd, but it carries all the supplies that they might need okay. at the polling places. So we go through and make sure they have everything they need for that day. We set up with the DPW for delivery of all the voting booths and the setup of all the booths. We have to contact all the polling locations and everyone that's involved, the police department, the DPW, the registrars. There's so many people. We, we probably have 130 people minimum that we pay on election day for this process. And um, that gets all set up ahead of time and then we're fielding calls and we get calls from people who say, gee, I didn't like this or I didn't like that, can we do this differently? And we try to work around everyone. Indeed. Um, the next thing we have to do is get all that machinery and everything out to the polling places and then get it back that <laughs> night. <laughs> so it is a long day getting out there and setting up. Now, do you set up the night before, or is that something that you set up early morning on Election Day? The DPW actually sets up the day and night before at all the polling locations. And the wardens of each polling place has to come in and pick up their machinery mm -hmm. the night before or the day before, hopefully, and if, you know, we'll, we'll give it to them on Friday because everything is locked up and done, or Monday at the latest, so that they have it for that morning because the wardens have to be at the polling locations between 5 and 6 in the morning. So, you know, it's a long day for all of them. Now, who serves as the wardens? Are these volunteers? Are these, uh, these paid community members? Who are our polling wardens? Our polling wardens are not volunteers they do get paid however they get paid a pittance so <laughs> they, honestly so uh, they really do this for democracy mm. truthfully I, all the people that work um, the clerks the the check-in people the checkout people it's an amazing amount of people and they work so well together and they really do a great job and they really do it for very little money.
Indeed. Well, I, I, in all of my experience going to the polls of the volunteers or not the volunteers, the, the workers there yes. have always been uh, so gracious and so kind. Thank and you. they're usually Barnstable This Morning viewers, which we always like. Yeah. Um, so they really have done a, a wonderful job. So, Anna, any other information uh, that, that people need to know uh, before going out to the polls? Actually, the first, what I wanted to ask you was how quickly are the results tabulated? When do people find out? I mean, obviously, there's there's a, a spread of information. A lot mm -hmm. of these races are, are multi-town uh, throughout the entire state so you've got to wait until all the towns come in but in terms of, of the local races do you wait until you have everything to release results or do you re release them that's a great question um, uh, let me just say this that on election night the police officer brings back the voting machine to us with the disk inside of it with all the results he also brings the tapes that were run by the wardens at the end of the evening a tape gets posted at each polling location for anyone to see. Those tapes come to us and we immediately post that tape outside of our office on the bulletin board so that anyone can come in and see the results as they are coming to us from the polling locations. Each one of those discs that are in the machines, the voting machines, they go into a separate machine in my office and it tabulates the results from it. I always put those, that information up as soon as possible. I call the IT director, God bless him, at whatever time we finish at night, and I send him the results for him to put up on the, the website, website, which is wonderful. So everybody can see it on the website because it's so much information because we've got so many different polling locations. Um, the, the good news is, is that it's considered unofficial results. And I say that in all seriousness because we have so many people out there who want to vote, but they, if they have a problem with the people that are running, they might vote for Mickey Mouse mm. or Donald Duck mm -hmm. or anybody else but, and those things come across to us. Now that's considered a write-in vote, and that's not really a write-in vote. You can't vote for a fictitious person. And I think that it's something that's very important for people to be aware of that, you know, they may think they're being funny by writing that in, but you have to take it seriously, no matter mm -hmm. if it is Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or, you know, your next door neighbor, yeah. um, that all has to be counted. So I would think that that adds to the time it takes to tabulate and it adds to the, the kind of overall work that has to be done. Well, that, that tabulation has to start at the precinct. So I'm not going to get the results from the precinct until they've started working on, a, on that. And they have to sit there and write all that information down in all those different races. And then we have to go back through and say, okay, well, Mickey Mouse doesn't count, so we'll take one from that right in and make it a blank. So my official results right. are really not until the next day at some point because there's so much to go through. Absolutely. And any, uh, any, any final advice, any, any, uh, anything else that you would like to get out there to our viewers uh, as we get closer to Election Day to make it smoother for, for the voting public and yes. also for the town clerk's office? For the voting public, remember those red pamphlets were sent out to everyone telling you about the different questions so you had something to look at and read before you come to uh, the polling locations. We will have those at the polling locations as well for those who have forgotten them. But if, if you're really diligent with it, you can fill that out for yourself and bring it with you, and then you know who you're going to vote for and how you're going to vote on all of those questions before you get to the polling location. So do your homework, in other words. Well, do your yeah. homework. It's, it's <laughs> always good to do your homework. It is. It is indeed. Well, Anne, I thank you so much. And again, if people uh, want to know more information, if they need to find out their polling place, uh, website and phone number for them to call. All right, please call 508-862-4044. We'll, that's the one phone number that rings and it goes to the next one if that's busy so we can always grab your phone call. Great. Uh, the second thing is you can go to the uh, town.barnstable.ma.us and you can find your polling location there under elections information under the town clerk's heading. Um, you can always find it though too on the state website of mass.gov and where do I vote? That's right. I believe if you just Google uh, Secretary of State Massachusetts, it'll come right up to that. And yes. you can also find the sample ballot both there and on the town's website. And Cork, I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and good you. luck uh, on, on the 4th.
Thank you. I'll take all the luck I can get. That's Come right. Come out and vote, please. It, indeed. And again, Election Day is Tuesday, November 4th. You can find out more information at town.barnstable.ma.us. And Cork is our town clerk. For Barnstable This Morning, I'm Sarah Holt.